Good morning. Wake up. Grace Point. How you guys doing today? Coming to you on a Wednesday. August 26th. Guess what? September is coming. How many of you are ready for September? It's the wake up jams. I play for you guys every day to get you going, get you moving and grooving, right? On a Wednesday. So good to see all of you that chime in, dial in each and every day with me. Here's the goal on Wake Up Grace Point. Give you just a little bit of the word. Give you a little bit of encouragement. Speak a blessing. Say a prayer over you so that we can go and live and do what God wants us to do today. So thank you for all of you. Give me your comment. Give me your interactions throughout our time together. Usually in about 10, 12 minutes. I notice the videos are just right about that. So I try not to take a lot of your time because I know you got stuff to do. I got stuff to do. And so there you go. Good morning and wake up Grace Point. High five. Hit the high five. High five me. Slap it. Come on, guys. All right. Well, so grateful that you are here today. I'm going to give one other second to get everyone a moment to dial in it's going to be a good one today going to be a good one today and um this is going to be one where i have to like confess failure but it should be a great spiritual truth and application hey for those of you let me get this out of the way go to grace point daily our youtube channel right there grace point daily the youtube channel we put all most of or all of our wake up grace point videos on there we put um most of our podcasts up there so modern christian dads podcast grace point daily podcast we put up there so anyway grace point daily youtube channel uh check out i'm like the weather guy here check out facebook page obviously you can keep track of us Grace Point Assembly of God on our Facebook. Our website, right up there. GracePointAG.org. And you guys can give online, give the missionaries there. Thank you for those of you that have partnered with our chair project. Getting ready to remodel our sanctuary, uh, putting in chairs. So what we're doing is trying to um, sell and get people to participate in buying those 250 chairs, $50 a piece. Um, you can go to our website and give online there and market, you know, chairs going towards the chair fund. I really appreciate that. Uh, we are at a hundred ish chairs, so 150 left to go and, uh, just excited, man. Want to keep, uh, pushing forward in ministry in the life of the church, uh, make our church look awesome. And you guys come visit us. Grace point assembly got church every Sunday morning, nine to nine 30 donuts and coffee. 9.30 Sunday School, Dr. R.B. Maynard, and 10.30 Service. Okay, here we go. Uh, I'll, I'll start off the, the word right away. Okay, here we go. The word says nothing because it's not pulled up. I had it pulled up. The word, the word. Okay. From Proverbs 1.8 says, My son, hear the instruction of your father and do not reject the teaching of your mother. And so... Uh, obviously we're going to talk about our, our heavenly father, that our heavenly father has given us instruction in, in teaching and in insight to live out the word of God. Good morning. Wake up. Grace point to Joan Stevens. Good to see you as always. So anyway, our heavenly father has given us instruction. What's it called? It's called the word. It's called the Bible. Uh, it's, uh, Heather, how are you? Heather Nicole Martin Reed. Good morning and wake up grace point. You have a blessed day too. I'm going to bless you in just a second, but the, the word give is, is our instruction manual. And it's very easy to, uh, overlook or forget the instructions and just to start, just to start operating and, and forget the things that we've learned and forget the things that we've been taught or, or to put them into practice. Right. And that's why we, um, you know, there's, uh, fundamentals, you know, like I'm thinking about sports cause there's some NBA basketball going on right now. Uh, you know, you learn these things in basketball and you practice and, uh, you know, you keep training and, but you don't want to forget the things that you've practiced. And, uh, I guess today 
my, the title of this little devotional I'm doing for you is don't forget your training. Don't forget what you've practiced. Now, I have a really bad story. I, I don't think this became public, praise the Lord. And so that's good. Uh, all right. I usually, no, not usually, but when I go work out, so I mean, sometimes I do outside, but when I go work out at uh, a workout place, it's the YMCA, you know, that's fun to stay at the YMCA. So that's where I work out at, work out at the YMCA. And they needed a, uh, or they needed help with the bus the other day, a bus driver. They have an after school program and they were scrambling to find someone uh, to drive the bus for the day. So I was like, oh, I can do that. I got a CDO. And because I subbed for our local school district last year a little bit. So anyway, um, I was like, yeah, I can do that. What do I need to do? Um, okay, we just you just go pick up this school, this one, this one, this one, and then uh, just go drop them off at this other school. Very simple, um, easy. And, uh, you know, nowadays with a bus, like you don't, uh, there's the bus driver and then there's bus aides, you know, and they monitor the kids and they watch the kids. And so anyway, it was, it was very, very easy. I went and checked out the bus. Okay, everything's functioning on the bus. We're ready to go. So... Uh, this is the first, now, this is the first time I helped them the very first time. Right. So I, I, I do the standard thing where you walk around the bus and you know, you look at the lights and you just, it's called the 360. You make sure everything's good and functioning. And then you go inside and walk up the aisle and, you know, just check the seats. And, uh, you know, then you sit down and check your seatbelt and make sure everything's functioning. Good. Okay. Uh, test drove it. Okay. Everything's feeling pretty good here. Uh, and then, um, I go get the bus aids, you know, there are two of them, two bus aids, uh, typically in the R9 district, you have uh, one. And so two bus, aids. I'm like, whoa, this is going to be a piece of cake, two bus aids. So uh, then get them and we go pick up the kids and there's, I don't know, 16 or 20 of them, not necessarily like a full bus or anything. And so we pick up the kid to do, we do the, do the little route and drop them off. And uh, when they're dropping them off, you know, then, then, then the, directors, the person's there and, uh, you know, managing things, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and anyway, so I'm, hopefully this is a long story getting to then. So anyway, then, uh, take the bus back and then, uh, drop the aids off and, um, you know, close up the deal. I kind of get up, I look around, okay, everything's good to go. I leave the bus. Okay. So anyway, everything's cool, right? Oh, that was so simple. That didn't even take very long. Um, okay, cool. I'm Glad I was able to to do that. That was very very simple. So anyway, then we uh, then I go home and I actually left my phone at the office for the day. And so then uh, I run back later on that night and get it. And then I have a text from a, a particular individual director person that was like, "I need to talk to you right away." And I was like, "Oh man, am I in trouble? Like I I thought everything went well on the bus and didn't have any problems and nothing weird happened that I know of." Well, then I uh, in the morning I call that person and come to find out that one of the kids was like hiding on the bus, like sleeping or underneath the seat or something like that on the bus. And fortunately they discovered it like just minutes after we had left uh, the bus and they were able to get the student right away. But the, the kid was like in the bus. So when I left the bus, there was still a kid on there. Okay. And th that's not good. That is not good. Uh, and that kid was on the bus and sleeping or hiding underneath the seat or something like that. And fortunately they, you know, someone caught it right away and, and it all worked out pretty well, but all that to say that was real, that was for that director. That was really scary. And then when I found out that I was like, I felt like such a moron, I felt like such, you know, I, I you know, and so obviously what do we do when sometimes when we're going through something, our first inclination is to blame it or put it on someone else. And in a sense I did, I was like, well, geez, that, why did the bus aides not see that? You know, that's kind of like what the bus helpers are there to do is to get the kids, monitor the kids, count the kids and make sure they're getting on and off the bus while I drive. That's their goal. Uh, but then, you know, I had to just, just own it and say to the person and the individual, like, you know what, that's on me. I'm sorry. Because, you know, when you read the manual, uh, in the book, you know, basically when you're the bus driver, you, you are the boss, you are the captain of the ship. There could be other helpers. There could be other people, uh, and, uh, other things going on, but you, you're the boss. You got to make sure 
that when the, when the bus is turned off, that you know, the kids are off and that's on you, right? Every, at the end of the day, everything is on you. So here, here's the summation of that story. Now don't, please don't run around. I am putting this on the internet, but don't run around and tell everybody that. Okay. Cause I don't think you got on the news or anything. I don't want them to get mad, but, uh, and maybe I should have just used general names, blah, blah. Here's the moral of the story is I didn't practice my training. I didn't practice my training because my training tells me when I'm done driving a bus, I walk to the end of the bus and, and I look at everything. I monitor everything, make sure that no one is there, that, that you know, all that. I, I, I didn't, I, I, I took for granted my training. I took for granted what I was taught and what I read in the manual, right? And I just assumed everything was all good and I didn't practice my training. So, wow, how much, uh, <laughs> I mean, not that you can't tell anyone the story. I'm just saying, like, don't call the, like, you know, Channel 7 News and be like, hey, the other day, did you get this one on the news? <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, anyway, but, you know, my son, hear the instruction of your father. Don't reject the teaching of your mother. Your mother. And I'm talking about our Heavenly Father. Don't forget your training. Don't forget what you have been taught. Don't forget the word. Sometimes we just, we, we go through our Christianity, our spiritual living, and we forget the things that we have been taught and that we have been trained. And that can come back to haunt us and severely bite us, if not careful. So in that particular situation, the kid, you know, the problem was recognized very fast and taken care of. And, um, you know, a parent was a, a little, you know, upset, rightfully so. Um, but, you know, no kid you know, got left in a bus for 10 hours or something like that. So praise God, that, that is really, really good. But the, again, it was really convicting for me to say, Jeremiah, you didn't practice your training. You knew in your training that you were supposed to do this and you did not practice your training. Uh, and number one, so when you don't live out, when you don't practice what you have been taught by your heavenly father, uh, number one, it might not bite you right now, but it might come back to haunt you ev eventually. And at the right moment, if you're not living out the training, the things that God has told you and commanded you and called you, uh, it could put you in a scenario. And, and you know what? Usually when you don't practice uh, in that scenario where I didn't practice my training, practice what I was taught, practice what I read in the manual, uh, you know, it, it would have affected not just myself, it would have affected someone else, right? And it did affect someone else uh, in, in a sense. So that's the goal is don't forget what you've been taught by your heavenly father. Don't, don't just assume, don't just, just don't, it, the, the, the time is not to just keep casually walking through our faith, but it's to practice the word of God, practice what, uh, what we've read, what we've been taught, what our heavenly father is teaching us to practice it and to live it out. Amen. I wasn't going to go in this direction, but this morning I was flipping through the book of James, you know, and that's big on faith versus works, but, uh, you know, it talks about not just being hearers of the word, but being doers of the word, doing and practicing what you have been trained. So there's my horrible, horrible confessional story to you today of an error that I made, uh, which wasn't costly, but could have been more costly, very well could have been, but it was a, uh, it was a mistake, uh, that happened because other people and myself included did not do what we were trained to do. We didn't practice what we were taught and what a great, uh, reminder spiritually is that we have to do what our father and uh, our spiritual father. We have to do what we've been trained and taught. We have to uh, remember uh, what we read in the manual, what we were trained and keep living and keep practicing and keep doing that. So, hey, wake up Grace Point. High five to you guys. Thanks for joining me each and every day. Don't forget today, practice the word of God. Practice what you practice, what you've been taught. Live it out. It's, it's not about uh, it's about faith and it's about works today. So God bless you guys. Hopefully that meant something to you, encouraged you a little bit today. Uh, good morning and wake up Grace Point to Greg Walden, Dr. R.B. Maynard, Helen and George Taylor. If you guys didn't catch the whole thing, uh, you know, don't go listen to it because I confessed a story of how I messed up. So anyway, <laughs> thanks for the high fives, everyone. Hey, good talking to you guys.
I will talk to you next time. All right. Oh, I got to pray. Well, I forgot to pray. Jesus, thank you for this day. Help us to do what we've been uh, we've been taught and trained to do. So I bless Joan Stevens today, Heather, Greg Walden, Dr. R.B. Maynard, Helen and George Taylor, that you would not just be hearers of the word, but you'd be doers of the word. Don't forget what God has tra- uh, told you to do. Stella Maynard, all of you, be doers of the word, faith, and works today are being expressed out of you into the hearts and lives of people in Jesus name. Hey, you guys are awesome. Talk to you next time.